Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So we're taking a quick break from all of the baby and parenting content to bring you this very special video. This is the fifth year in a row that I am doing this and I'm not stopping. I love making these videos. So this is my revenue breakdown as a YouTuber, podcaster, content creator, all of that good stuff. And yes, there will be pie charts. There are always pie charts. So one of the reasons why I love making these videos is one, because I find it useful for me to see the breakdown of where my revenue has come from in each financial year. But by sharing it, I hope to kind of demonstrate the importance of having multiple revenue streams if you are a content creator or if you're just a freelancer in general. And because of the industry I'm in, there is no like one size fits all when it comes to how people make money. There's also a bit of mystery around it. And so I like to kind of share how my revenue streams pie chart breaks down and maybe it'll be useful for some of you or just if you're nosy and curious, we can all have a good time. So the financial year that we're going to be looking at for this video is 2021 to 2022. And my business financial year basically is from April to April, which is quite handy for us because it means that this last year that we're looking at ended right before my maternity leave. Also the year that we're looking at is the year that I was pregnant and also I took essentially like two months off work during my first trimester because I was so ill. There were a few things that were already scheduled in that I had to show up for painfully, but I took a big break from YouTube and podcasting for about two months. So not a lot was getting done there. So we'll see how that reflects with everything. One of the other main reasons why I like to track this is because the first year that I did this, 2017 to 2018, I discovered that 80% of what I made came from brand deals and then the next 10% came from AdSense. And so that meant that 90% of my income came from advertising, which is not great in terms of stability and security and all of that kind of stuff. It just felt like all of my eggs were in one basket that is quite a volatile basket. So over the years, one of the main things that I've been tracking is what percentage of my income comes from brand deals, comes from advertising and trying to buff out the other areas. The main ones that I've been focusing on have been things like Patreon and affiliates because those are things that I feel like I have a lot more control over and they feel more beneficial to me and my audience as a community. That same year when I started tracking this, Patreon was 1.6% of my revenue and affiliates was 1.3%, so real low. But how that has changed and it makes me very, very excited and happy. So 2018 to 2019, I definitely made some progress. Brand deals were at around 58% and Patreon was at 6.2% and affiliates was at a whopping 10. So a lot was happening. Just advertising a lot of sex toys with my affiliate links, clearly. 2019 to 2020, brand deals went up again to about 72%. Patreon went up again, 8.1%. Affiliates went down to 4%. Just clearly advertising less sex toys because consistently about 90% of the money I make from affiliates is sex toys. So <laughs> it's like, how much am I making videos and pushing my discount codes for sex toys? That's usually a marker of how much I'll make from affiliates in a year. And then last year, brand deals were at 58%, Patreon was at 12 and affiliates were at 14. And so I felt really good about that. It definitely felt like a healthier spread, a healthier balance of where income was coming from. And if you want a more detailed breakdown of all of those previous years, I have made videos like this for each year. So you can go and watch those. But now it is time to reveal the 2021 to 2022 pie chart revenue streams breakdown time. Ta-da! <laughs> This is what it is. Dee, dee, dee. So one of my goals when I started tracking and documenting this was for brand deals to be around 50% of my revenue because that 80% was just too high and made me feel very anxious. And this is the first year that is actually been under 
50%, which is interesting. And I wonder if that's got anything to do with maybe the two months off that I took, but actually I think it's got more to do with the changing landscape of how sponsorships and ads are working on YouTube and social media. So I feel like I did less on YouTube last year and actually my rates were going down and it's not like my views are going down necessarily and actually I have this channel as well that I do some sponsorships on as well but generally I felt like the kind of like bigger campaigns that I was getting like I wasn't really getting as many of those in the last year however still consistently getting quite a lot on Instagram and brands are definitely more interested in Instagram posts and reels like I had to really force myself to teach myself reels because that's what some brands wanted. I'm now much more comfortable with making reels but it's still the case of like that's what brands want nowadays. And it's really interesting because I was speaking to my management about this and they say that across like all of their clients who are like YouTubers and Instagrammers and TikTokers, like kind of like a wide spread across the agency, most of the brand deals that they're doing are on TikTok and Instagram Reels and the smallest, smallest amount is on YouTube. And I'm like, is that just me then? <laughs> so that's really interesting how things are shifting. So speaking of YouTube, my AdSense revenue, which is the money that I get when you see ads on these videos and also the slice of the YouTube pie I get from YouTube premium subscriptions, that is at 14.1%, which is the biggest slice of the overall pie that it has been since I started tracking this, which is interesting. And my theory is that it is pregnancy content because that shit makes bank. My pregnancy and announcement video made more money in the first week it was live than my Hannah Witten channel normally makes in an entire month. Like advertisers love the pregnancy, the baby, the mummy, the parenting content. And so it'll be interesting to kind of see now that I'm making some more videos, especially on this channel about parenting and about, you know, being a mom and about baby stuff if that continues, if I see AdSense being a bigger slice of the pie. That being said, my CPM, which is the cost per meal, so like how much you get per thousand views on my Hannah Witten, the sex education channel, is still dog shite because of the type of content that it is in advertisers in general, unless I'm talking about pregnancy. They, they don't care for it. They, they do not want to be associated with the filth. We love filth here though. So next up, I am very <laughs> excited to say that Patreon was actually the second biggest slice of my pie this year coming in at 16.2%. I talk about Patreon a lot. Patreon is very important to me. My patrons are absolutely crucial to me being able to do the work that I do and making all of this content and running my business. What's interesting to me is that it is such a big slice of the pie this year because I don't think I ran any special offers in the last year, mostly because I took that two months off and that just like dramatically reduced the amount of work that I was able to do. And then I was mostly prepping for having a baby and going on maternity leave at the beginning of this year. And so I didn't have time like I normally would around that time to run a special offer for my patrons. So in the past we've had like stickers and pins and a bookmark. Yeah, I'm surprised that Patreon has remained so high, even though that's not something that I did in those 12 months, because usually that is something that kind of like boosts my Patreon. But hey, thank you all so much for, for joining and staying, even without the exciting merch incentives. <laughs> Next up is affiliates, which comes in at a very healthy 14.1%. I am very pleased with this. I don't actually really remember pushing my affiliate links all that much this year, but obviously they're like everywhere on loads of my videos that still get lots of views, even though they're old videos. We did that one video about sex toy colors. And so obviously I popped in all of my affiliate links in that video. But other than that, 
I can't really remember off the top of my head any really intentional pushes. I didn't do any big pushes around Black Friday because I was doing a sponsorship thing with a sex toy company and they had exclusivity rights in terms of me talking about sex toys. So I couldn't do the whole like, hey, affiliate links to all of these other brands around that time, maybe. I'll do it this year, who knows? We'll see if any sex toy companies want that exclusivity with me, baby, but they have to pay for it. And if you don't know what affiliate links are, basically, if you purchase something through my individual links, then I get a little kickback, some commission from that purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and often I've got relationships with the brands that I'm sharing the links of, and they have discount codes that you can use. So, you know, if there is a sex toy that you want, if there's a sex toy company, Company that you want to purchase from, maybe I have a discount code and you should check some of my sex toy videos to see if there is a discount in there for you. You're welcome. Next up is the podcast. So I have a podcast called Doing It where I interview lots of cool and interesting people all about sex and relationships and no surprises here, this really hasn't changed since I started the podcast, but it is coming in at a respectful 1.5%. <laughs> And I've talked about this before, of just how I absolutely love making this podcast. It is a huge part of what me and my team work on in terms of like actually the percentage of hours that we put in is a lot more than 1.5%. But that's where things like Patreon come in because that income from Patreon offsets a lot of that cost and helps us still make this podcast. Because if we were just relying on podcast revenue, that plays in the advertisements that you might hear when you listen to the podcast, there is no way this podcast is making any money and we wouldn't really have the time or the resources to make it. But thanks to Patreon, we do. So now we're getting into some of the things that I do less of. They probably take up like a much smaller percentage of my time, but you know, they still take up a modest chunk of the pie chart. And first up is events and speaking at 3.4%. So this includes being paid to appear on podcasts. That was two BBC podcasts that I did last year. I also did a guest lecture online for Birkbeck. It was like a media and communications course. And I talked about the whole YouTube world <laughs> and landscape and what I do. Also, I spoke on a few panels for YouTube and these were more like internal ones where as a creator, I was speaking about my experiences to an audience of YouTube employees. And then also I did some work for Adobe Creator Camp. I actually attended the Adobe Creator Camp for one of their cohorts, which is how I learned how to edit on Premiere Pro. And then they invited me back for the next cohort to do a presentation about organization. <laughs> and so that's what I did. And I had a lot of fun putting together this presentation that was about organization and productivity for creators and YouTubers. In my element, in my element. And then I also took part in Ali Abdul's part-time YouTuber Academy at first as a house captain. So would do these like accountability calls with a bunch of the cohort people who were taking part in the course and then also doing a few like office hours Q and A's with folks as well. So the events and speaking stuff is like a small slice of the pie, but it's stuff that I really enjoy. And I'm like, do I try and do more of that kind of stuff? intentionally, we will see. <laughs> work is very intense right now as we try and like figure out my new schedule with like working less and with Rowan at the Childminders and all of that. So I'm not making any like massive <laughs> commitments to be like, I wanna be doing more of this right now. But it is something in the back of my mind of like, oh, like that's something that I could potentially like increase as the slice of the pie. And it's something that I really enjoy doing. And especially if it is things like doing presentations, then it might be a case that I can like make a presentation I can then use like multiple times for different things. And so you just do the work once and then you can keep doing it. Does that make sense? Next up, we have a comeback because this wasn't on the pie chart last year or maybe the year before, I don't know. And that is merch coming in at 1.3%. And the only reason why this is here is because when I moved into this studio and I got all of my old stuff out of storage, I did a massive merch sale. Cause I was like, I need to get rid of all of this old stuff. 
stuff. And that was a lot of fun, a lot of work. It was absolute chaos. I basically like took over our entire hallway in our flat with just like boxes of posters and bags and boxes and everything. Multiple, multiple trips to the post office. It was probably a massive waste of my time because I made no money from this. Yes, it takes up 1.3% of the revenue pie chart, but you should see the expenses of buying all of the postage. <laughs> and the packaging. But it was very cathartic to do that final sale and I'm really glad that all of the products like found homes because it felt very wasteful just to have all of this stuff that wasn't going to be used and so I'm very happy that you know, they've gone to happy homes. Next up, the smallest slice of the pie at 0.4% is writing. And this is just royalties from my books. I've not done any like active writing recently at all really. Maybe like the odd paid blog post or article or something. But this is a very, very small part of the pie and no book deals lined up. Not particularly interested in writing a book at the moment. So that is little, that is little. And finally, other income is at 2.7%. And this kind of is made up of a few things. One is Twitch. I don't know if I streamed on Twitch for this entire 12 months, maybe like one or two times. So I'm very confused why there are still some people who are subscribed to my Twitch channel. But I know that if you have like Amazon Prime, then you get like one free Twitch sub a month. So maybe that's what you're doing and it's not actually costing you anything. So fair enough. The other is my third of the income that the Banging Book Club podcast just still gets because that is just out there and sometimes people like to still listen to it, but this is very minuscule. But most of this 2.7% is actually made up of consultancy. And I am tempted, we'll see if I do more consultancy this year, maybe it will become its own category. And this is essentially when brands or other creators or other sex educators get in touch with me and they're like, hey, can I pick your brain doing some market research? I would like to know your expertise in this area. And I'm like, yes, I can tell you, this is my hourly rate. And they go, okay, great. I'm like, damn it, I should have charged more. But this is something that I really love doing. I'm really passionate about this industry and the work that I do. And so when other people want to be a part of it and they want to do it right, I'm like, hello, yes, I can help you, but please pay me for my expertise. Thank you very much. So yeah, consultancy is something that I have very much enjoyed doing. Obviously, it's still a very like small slice of the pie currently, but maybe in the same way as like events and speaking, it could be something that I build out in the future, although no solid plans to do that yet. However, if you do want to get in touch, about consulting or you want to pick my brain or you want some info from me then do get in touch because I will have a look on an ad hoc basis <laughs> essentially. I'm open for business sometimes, we'll see. So there we have it, that is the breakdown of my 2021 to 2022 revenue as a YouTuber, podcaster, sex educator, all of that stuff. I hope you found this interesting. I love watching these kinds of videos. I especially love watching them about either other content creators or people who have entirely different jobs to me, but they're like still freelancers. I just find it fascinating to see how people who are self-employed and run their own businesses make money and like where their revenue streams come from. Links to all of the stuff that I've mentioned below, such as discount codes, those affiliate links, and also my Patreon, of course. I hope that you're all well, and I'll see you in my next video.